So I think because engineers are usually very like logic driven, very process analytic dri analytics driven people, uh, it's really awesome to understand that the design is actually coming from that place too. So Welcome back to our channel. My name is Luba and I'm a software engineer. And my name is Alexa and I'm a product designer. Today we came up with a set of tips that we want to share with you guys of how we software engineers and us product designers can work better together. Yeah, better together. That is that is the theme for our video today because it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. We, we need to be able to work together in order to build products. Tip number one, we're collaborators. It's very important to know that the other party, the other function, does actually have a different perspective of how they look at products. So before you start working on anything, you need to make sure that you know that perspective and you need to make sure that you share your perspective with the other party. Yeah, something that I thought was really interesting when I was starting this work right after school was that um, I, I realized I hadn't really worked with software engineers before. Mm -hmm. Uh, I worked with other designers in a lot of my school projects. I was the only one working on them, so I had control over all of the decisions. Yeah. And so it was really interesting going into uh, going into work uh, professionally and actually having to work with mm -hmm. software engineers because they have a very, very different perspective on how to build products. Definitely. Different, and different is not bad. It's just different. That can also mean that the opinion can be challenging to yours. And again, that's really great. We both have a different mindset and a different way of thinking, a different uh, knowledge base really that we can bring to the table that if you're open to understanding someone else's opinion on how something works, you'll actually build products more productively, mm -hmm. uh, better for the customer, better for the business. So I would also say that being good uh, at collaboration creates a faster feedback loop, which in a lot of the cases is super important because I personally have experienced and a lot of my software engineering friends that I talk to have experienced where if you don't involve designers early on in the process, then a lot of the times you build something and then you bring it to design and then it turns out to be a product that they completely didn't want or didn't they didn't expect it to be built a certain way and then you're sent back and you have to redo everything and yeah. that just creates a lot of wasted time and effort and work for both of the parties okay tip number two is to appreciate technical constraints in engineering a lot of things have already been built a certain way and when you try to introduce a new feature and new uh, functionality to the existing product uh, designers might not necessarily be aware of certain engineering technical constraints that already exist in the framework to introduce that feature the way they envision it. However, knowing technical constraints also means that you should know when those technical constraints are flexible and when they're just completely unchangeable. Because also sometimes we engineers just might not want to put that extra effort and work to get you guys, you designers, to that 100% ideal case scenario of how everything is gonna be so beautiful and perfect. And we might not necessarily agree with it because on our side, it would just be a way more effort to do that. So sometimes you just need to push us to to get there because you might be familiar with the technical constraints of our system and you might know that it it actually is possible to be done so yeah definitely push us <laughs> this is great yeah no i uh, i can't reiterate this enough it's so important to understand and know the technical constraints before you start a project especially a big project i'm working on a project right now at work and it's been at least half a year i think that i've been working on it and my goodness, the technical constraints on this project are so run so deep. Um, if I wasn't clear about them from the beginning, I could have spent a ton of time, mm -hmm. um, seemingly wasted time, trying to design the product in a way which just wouldn't work for what we needed yeah. for the release. And you know, that's that's sort of irresponsible. You know, um, to Luba's point, there are going to be technical constraints that you can push back a little on. I'm not saying you shouldn't design for the ideal. I do do. I still do that myself. Um, because I also think that there's value in that. But there are certain constraints that we just can't change in, the, in, in any given time, and that should be a part of 
the design constraint that you consider mm -hmm. for how you design and, and um, finalize the project. Tip number three, document the edge cases. So coming from a design perspective, it sort of seems like this one might be obvious. Um, I think I'm always trying to think about all of the possible use cases that um, a person could be using our products under. However, it's very easy to miss one of these use cases. As much as you really tr truly are empathizing and trying to understand the people who are using your products, there are going to be cases that you're not going to think of. And interestingly enough, the engineering team can't miss those use cases. They just, they can't. They have to build the product to work. Yeah, we as engineers a lot of the times are forced to think about those cases because otherwise the code will blow up. Yeah, think about usability and practicality. Of course, think about the ideal case and ideal flow, but again, the product might not be used as intended. The product will not necessarily go through an ideal flow. The Wi-Fi might be spotty. The user might hit the back button if it's a mobile app like a thousand times and something will happen. Tip number four is explain your process. So we can't emphasize it more, but we do, after all, have a different perspective. So for designers, some of the best experiences I've heard my engineering fellow friends have is when designers actually share the design process, the design thinking of why a certain thing is designed and done a certain way. For instance, the grid, like why is it important to have a space and to be like exactly four pixels or something? It does not usually come from a from a point where a designer is like, oh yeah, like, I think it just looks cool to have a four pixel space. But in reality, is that it's actually really logical and mathematical. So I think because engineers are usually very like, logic driven, very process analytic dri analytics driven people, uh, it's really awesome to understand that the design is actually coming from that place too. So Ever since I went to design school, I've, I've understood this. Design has always been about functionality in purpose and logic and although good design often has good aesthetics it's ple um, aesthetically pleasing it looks good that doesn't mean that it came out of nowhere mm -hmm. there's reasons behind um, button colors hierarchy grid mm -hmm. systems um, all of that has to make sense to have a good usable product mm -hmm. I've found it's been really important when I go into a feedback session or a meeting with my engineering team that I explain logically mm -hmm. why I made that decision. Not just this is it, this is how it's gonna look, don't you like it. I have a very strong opinion about the difference between art and design and it kind of circles back to this but again we can talk about that later. Tip number five, create a common language. Yes, exactly. <laughs> because we have these different languages, okay, acknowledge that. Well why don't we create one a new one in the middle so we can work and communicate together. Exactly. Yeah. So design language system has been proven to be extremely extremely useful because despite different abstractions and different thinking processes and communication processes having that common language makes us more efficient in understanding what the other party is actually talking about yeah i've i've been lucky to work at the last two companies i've worked at have had these design system languages in place already and so this often comes in the form of like a style guide or a component library mm -hmm. it's in place because it's already solved a lot of problems mm -hmm. for usability um, and accessibility so that it can create consistency across your products and then again it also helps bridge the communication between engineers and designers I think the consistency point is actually super important I've seen it happen so many times where a website, an app, whatever, has just been so inconsistent, different parts of it look completely different from the other parts, and it actually is really, really hard to make it consistent again. Also, having a design language system, a design component library is important, is because your designers, your engineers, they leave, it's inevitable. Like, someone will go and get a different job, or like, not, not everyone will stay at the company forever, and just coming in as a new person, it makes your life so much easier easier when there is already something in place. You no longer have to rebuild a table anymore. You exactly. Just, you just have the table component in place. And if we need to make updates to it for whatever reason, we can make an update to it and it will affect the table as it exists everywhere in the product. Exactly. And our last tip, tip number six, be a friend. Yeah, be a friend. <laughs> Come on guys. <laughs> just be friends. <laughs> It sounds super obvious, however, I don't even want to say that we like come from different perspectives and from different backgrounds, it just, we're human and yeah. um, I mean it's all about collaboration as we said and 
be by being a friend we mean make the effort to hang out and get to know the other person on a personal level yeah because yeah. knowing people on a personal level on how they are outside of their work function it means that you create more trust and more trust means um openness and communication better collaboration easiness in giving someone critique and feedback this is the thing that came up the most when i was collecting stories from my friends the other project designers establishing a trusting relationship with the engineers that they work with was one of the most important things to them. It really opened up possibilities mm -hmm. for so many other things. Like Luba said, communication is so, so important for us to build products and work better together. And if that's not there, if you don't trust the person that you're working closely with, there's gonna be conflict, you're gonna have arguments that end in frustration and anger, and it's going to ultimately affect the business. And uh, the products that you're trying to build. So some things that you can do uh, to establish those relationships. Some ones that have worked really well for me, I attend the team lunch mm -hmm. uh, that my engineering team puts together every Friday. We go out, we hang out, we eat food, uh, just get to know each other a little bit better. If your team does offsites, yeah. make sure that you include people from various functions that work on your products and projects in that offsite. Um, make an effort to invite people to drinks, invite people yeah. to lunch, as Alexa said, any kind of team, team activities that you are doing. Yeah, and actually not just team activities, right? Like maybe you just ask one of the engineers you work with to lunch one of, um, one of these days. Or maybe you just vibe so well that you just want to <laughs> hang out with the other person all the time. You actually become <laughs> friends. Exactly. Yeah. Not just like, you know, friends, be friends, <laughs> let's hold hands, let's sing songs together, but like you actually, <laughs> actually are friends. friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're not that scary. Yeah. Right? It's yeah, just yeah. not scary. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. That was it. Oh my gosh. That was six tips. Do We're it. collaborators. Appreciate technical constraints. Document the edge cases. Explain your process. Create a common language. And be a friend. Be a friend. The most important one of all. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope that our tips were actually helpful. Thank you again so much for your support. We've loved putting these videos together. If you have any suggestions, if you are wondering whether we can put a video together on a certain topic, please leave comments, reach out to us. We love when people reach in, are reaching out. We look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe and follow along on our journey. Uh, until next time. Until next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.